Good morning once again. Thanks for joining us here on TV3 New Day. Now we're talking about vegetables, the vegetable policy and whether or not the vegetables that we eat are safe for us. And in studio, we have uh, Mr. Kweku Asante, who's Executive Director at Agency for Health and Food Security. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you, Aisha. How safe do you think the vegetables that we eat are for us? Yeah, um, safety. Mm. In fact, um, when we talk about safety, we have less than 10% of our farmers or uh, producers trained in the vegetable sector, in, in agriculture. Mm. And it means that about 90% of our producers do not really know the agronomic practices. They don't know how much chemical uh, fertilizers, how much pesticide, uh, we, we decide mm -hmm. by size to apply on the commodities. Right. So it means that they're just producing from historical knowledge, from peer and knowledge. And so they, they, we, that's why we keep having our uh, vegetables being rejected on the international market. market. And people have problems consuming locally. So we are looking at uh, both demand and supply. The, the, the supply is weak. It's not technically sound. And so the demand locally and internationally, is poor. Mm. So uh, we have um, the larger majority of us will buy food and then when, when they want to buy, they want to add vegetables, we say stop. Why? Because people are skeptical about the source of water used to irrigate. Mm. They are skeptical, skeptical about um, the amount of fertilizer and the uh, weedicides that are applied. Right. Uh, the farmers are not observing withdrawal period. Mm. When pesticides are applied, there's supposed to be some amount of uh, time for the chemicals to uh, withdraw from the commodities. But because the farmers do not adhere to the, the production principles with, with the chemical usage, mm. quite often they harvest thinking that they want to meet the market demand. Right, right. And they, they take the commodities to the market when they are still not safe for consumption. So all these are problems that prevent uh, vegetable consumption locally and then uh, keep our vegetable sector being rejected uh, internationally as well. Yes, rejected. Now it appears that um, the vegetables that we grow at home, we taste better because of course uh, there are not too many uh, chemicals added to it. Why can't the same be done for mass consumption as well since you know they are being rejected on the international market? Yes, uh, in fact um, that's the essence of uh, the research work we did. Right. The research work we did sought uh, to unravel the bottlenecks mm. within the uh, demand and supply uh, chain of the vegetable sector. So we looked at uh, what other countries are doing and uh, what we can emulate from them. We saw that uh, the Africa sector agriculture policies, including that of Ghana, are very, very silent on vegetable. Right. There's mention of uh, cocoa, um, we have uh, cereals, legumes, but little mention is made of vegetables mm. until the recent uh, campaign for planting for food and jobs and all that. Th there hasn't been any specific policy to deal with the vegetable sector mm. value chain and the specific commodities therein. So it means that there's a lot of work we need to do. And it's impacting heavily on our health. Because, come to think of it, about 60%, 6 out of 10 children under 5, mm -hmm. are anemic, as it stands now. Right. Uh, ten, uh, 4 out of 10 women in fertile ages, between age 15 and uh, uh, 49, are also anemic. And this is caused by... And largely because of n not inadequate consumption of vegetables. Mm. Because when you take mm. a, a small amount of vegetables, the amount of macronutrients and vitamins, minerals that you get is, is substantial. Apparently because we are not taking vegetables enough, we, we are malnourished and the incidence of uh, malnutrition, uh, obesity, uh, stunting, wasting is... is high, unacceptably high in Ghana mm -hmm. and Africa. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, there's a need for us to be able to have a sound policy that deals with both the consumption of the vegetables and the its, it's value chain. Right. So that we can, we can be sure that uh, 
we have we, we, we are making progress because we come to economically right economically mm. we are also losing a lot vegetables can employ masses mass of the youth the the youth that we we we, we seek to uh be worried about because of unemployment mm -hmm. can directly engage in vegetables because we won't take an acre of vegetable produced the profits that one can get is far about over four times that of producing other uh, commodities so just per production we can have a lot of uh, uh, income we can have livelihood support mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. coming from it mm -hmm. talk about women women empowerment women do take they, they, they when you look at the gender parity and the uh, dimensions of vegetables right women t tend to have more time mm -hmm. for uh, to take care of vegetables and so because of that um we, we, we vegetable can employ a lot more women because mm -hmm. when you look at the value chain from production a lot more women are there processing marketing we have a lot of women so if you want to really empower women it is vegetable women to right, look at right, so there right. are so many and when you look at the sdg sustainable development goals mm. there are so many dimensions of the sustainable development goals that can be facilitated by having a policy and implementing the policy right. on the vegetable sector so um the research has been done and you have uh, sought to explain to us what the research was focusing on um but what are some of the uh, policy gaps that need to be addressed per yeah. the research yes so the policy gap mainly mm. is the fact that our policies are not specific to vegetable they are not responsive to vegetable sector and so um what we were recommending was that number one we should have vegetable specific mm. commodity uh, value chain policy and how do we do that and before we can do that we need to uh, have policy dialogue with the key stakeholders and that's that will follow from our discussion subsequent activities would would include meeting the key stakeholders on the uh, in agri sector to propose possible uh, policies for the vegetable sector and then also uh, have some agreement and partnership we are looking forward to partnerships for us to be able to take this work further because uh, it, it, it's it, it's not about one institution in SDG 17 mm. talks about a lot, a lot about partnership so if partnership is not built one organization cannot do all so we call on all stakeholders who are uh, who are who have interest in development, in sustainability, in agriculture, to team up with us so that we can push the vegetable sector uh, policy, get projects and programs to implement. And then uh, right, the research. Right. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about the focus group discussions uh, before we, we, we wrap up. Yeah, yeah. So the focus group discussion, we looked at the demand and supply. So the supply side dealt with land acquisition mm. so land acquisition for farming wa was a major key uh, point that was brought about brought from the discussions it, it, it apparently farmers and producers felt that they were not going into commercial production mm -hmm. because they, they, there were a lot of conflicts around land acquisition so they would prefer doing substance rather than risking to do commercial and uh, sometimes the chiefs are seen to re allocate the land that has been uh, set for farming right. for development purposes. Right. So sometimes it, it prevents people from going into uh, vegetable production. And the recommendation from that was that uh, because MUFA is properly decentralized across the MMDAs, mm -hmm. there should be mechanism for the, M, uh, the MUFA departments to facilitate land bank acquisition right. and then uh, set up processing centers and all that that should be channeled or controlled by MUFA because of the district level activities and then apart so from generally that, what do you think the way forward is you know when it comes to these things so the way forward is for us to number one have a sound policy mm. so after the policy the policy would m give direction as to exactly what we should do per community per when we talk about tomato right what we should do for tomato what we should do in uh, carrot, cabbage, onion, and so on. So that uh, once the policy directives are there, Ghana, we are good at policies. 
when it comes to implementation, we are very poor. So apart from the policy, there should be investment strategy, funding mechanisms to support the policy, to be able to uh, stand and be implemented. So that it's not just uh, something on paper, mm. but something that is really working. China, Thailand have done it. Th th uh, China had a similar problem like we, we have. Right. They were importing most of their uh, vegetables from uh, other countries. But when they instituted the vegetable basket project, they started with uh, productivity, production per acre. Mm -hmm. Then they went into diversification. Then they now they are the global leader when it comes to vegetables. So that's something we can that's also emulate can emulate and, some, and do. All right, so thank you. There's thank a lot you. that we, we can, can do. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much, uh, Mr. Kwekwasanti. Mr. Kwekwasanti is executive director of Agency for Health and Food Security. And we've been talking about how safe our vegetables are and also the vegetable policy. Now